Okay, I think we are um, ready to start. Um, so let me uh, introduce uh, myself. Uh, I'm Michał, I'm a software engineer uh, working for Google. And today I will co-present with uh, Yuki, who is a software engineer at uh, CyberAgent. And uh, we are going to talk about Q, um, which is the project that we are uh, maintainers of. Um, and uh, we will show and demonstrate capabilities of Q to build uh, a platform for running AI ML workloads. Uh, and in particular, focusing on the capabilities for uh, quota uh, resource management. So let me start by introducing what uh, is Q. So Q is uh, a job level scheduler and as such is res its responsibility is to determine when to start or stop a job. So it operates uh, one level higher of abstraction than a cube scheduler that operates on pods. So with Q we uh, delay uh, pod creation actually until the job is started. And this is very important because with this capability we are able to offload the uh, API server and cube scheduler. Uh, another important characteristic of Q is that we uh, have the goal of supporting uh, all or nothing semantic. So for machine learning jobs, uh, it is very important that all pods are running at the same time. Uh, so as you can imagine with limited resources, if two large jobs start at the same time, they could deadlock and could not run all the pods. So this is one of the important goals for Q. Um, and of course, with Q, we support quota management. So we support quota management both at the team level that lets you specify the quotas per team um, because maybe they have different priorities. Uh, we also support specifying quota for different resource uh, types, like different models of GPUs. And we also give you control over preferences for different um, machines, like how they are provisioned. Is it on demand or reservation that you have some discounts on? Because maybe there are different prices depending on how the uh, nodes come to be. So how does Q achieve its goals? So the main design principle of Q is actually very simple. Uh, we want to be cloud native. And what this means? So this means that, for example, we don't need to have any external database. So uh, everything lives in, inside uh, ETCD and that is managed by Kube API server. Also, we are compatible uh, and coexist nicely with all uh, core Kubernetes components, such as cluster autoscaler, Kube scheduler, or job controller. So none of the components is forked or replaced uh, when working with Q. And of course, sometimes we encounter gaps in the core components. Um, but then we have like policy for pushing the required uh, enhancements upstream. So one success uh, story for the pushing uh, the requirement enhancements as upstream is the su suspend semantic. Uh, so uh, this is what we needed for Q to delay uh, pod creation. And uh, it was added to the batch job, the core Kubernetes uh, API, and soon uh, later adopted by other job CRDs letting us to integrate Q with, uh, with the CRDs. And by today, Q supports uh, seamless integration with uh, job, job set, uh, a portfolio of Kubeflow jobs that let you run uh, ML uh, frameworks such as TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, we also support Ray, and we also expose a job framework that lets you build your integrations with your own in-house uh, job CRDs. And also, by the way, we support pod groups. So if you're in your environment, you uh, create pods by some external uh, systems, then we, you can also integrate them with Q. So to better understand how Q works, let's take a, and where is its place uh, among other Kubernetes controllers. Let's take a look at the job life cycle. So um, the job starts uh, to exist by a user that creates the job. Uh, and in uh, the um, webhook creation, uh, Q suspends the job with the uh, field that I mentioned. And it is queued until the quota is reserved. So once the quota is reserved, 
for the job, uh, we have an, an additional optional um, check for uh, admission check. So this is basically a plugin mechanism that let you inject your own logic uh, before admitting a, do a job. Uh, and once the admission check are uh, fulfilled, uh, the job starts to run and the job controller creates the pods. Uh, the job still can be preempted, like stopped by uh, queue, if another uh, higher priority job comes in. Uh, but in the happy path, the cluster of the scaler takes over and creates nodes for the pods. And uh, finally, cube scheduler binds the pods to the nodes. So now let's take a look at Q from yet another angle of API objects that are uh, relevant in this picture. So the most uh, basic object is job. So, and it's pretty much the only object that users interact with. So uh, jobs are created by users and in, uh, here is where the user specify um, the number of pods that the job uh, requires and also the pod template that specify the amount of different resources uh, required to run the pods. And as I was saying, Q supports uh, various types of jobs. So in order to abstract out uh, them and also add some extra details, we, uh, Q creates the uh, workload object and maintains one-to-one -one correspondence between the workload and the job created by the user. And the jobs are sent to uh, local queues uh, that is indicated by the label on the job added by the user. Um, and all the quota management is possible due to the um, cluster uh, queue uh, object API where uh, the admin configures the quotas. And the main concept for configuring the quotas is uh, resource flavor. Uh, so, resource flavor is like an abstraction for a set of uh, machines of the uh, common characteristic, where the one dimension of the common characteristic may be, let's say, the model of GPU uh, that you want to use, or another may be how the uh, machines are provisioned. Is it reservation, spot on demand, or just like Cartesian above? Basically, uh, a set of machines with common characteristics. Uh, another important concept for Q is cohort. So cohort basically uh, sets you the uh, scoping for uh, preemption and borrowing um, uh, for a set of cluster queues. And then we also have the concept mentioned before of admission checks that let you uh, define the additional conditions under which the job is uh, uh, admitted. Now I would like to present you the uh, project of the batch reference architecture. So the goal of this project uh, is to help the um, cloud architects uh, or system architects to build platforms for running AIML workloads. And this is inspired based on um, the um, feedback from the GKE users. Uh, so it's like to collect all the best practices for uh, building such systems. It doesn't necessarily correspond to one to one to any of the like systems, but it's a kind of abstraction for um, a recommendation how to uh, what is the starting point for building such systems. Uh, but they still can be customized per user uh, preferences. If you are interested more into the details of the project, here's the link. So I recommend to take you to take a look at this. Uh, but in this section, I would like to show you the, like, how Q works based on the simplified uh, example inspired by the batch reference architecture, where I would like to show you um, the, uh, how, how Q works. So in this setup, we have two teams. The blue one is the higher priority team, and the green one is the lower priority team. They send the workloads to the corresponding local queues, pointing to the cluster queues. Uh, that are wrapped into the um, cohort. And at the end of the day, we have physical resources in the cluster that are split into three resource flavors, the uh, reservations on demand and spot. And you can, for simplicity, think that we are talking about one model of GPU. Uh, so in this scenario, let's say we have the low priority workload sent to the, um, by the uh, green team. So for the first workload, 
uh, what Q does is we consider the uh, resource flavor defined for the cluster Q uh, below in order. So we first consider the reservation resource flavor. And in this case, we uh, don't have nominal quota, but we have the borrowing limit that allows us to run one of the workloads um, because we will borrow from the other cluster queue. So this, is, this allows us to put the, one, the first workload on reservations. For the, second, for the remaining workloads, we no longer can borrow, uh, so we land them on the spot machines. Uh, now, let's say the high priority workloads come in. So, uh, again, Q considers the workload in the order. First, we try reservations, but what we see is reservations are already taken, so we would need to preempt to run. And this is a configuration option, but by default, we prefer not to preempt, so the first of the workloads will land on on demand resource flavor. For the second, uh, we cannot longer put them put it on demand in this example because we don't have more cluster queues to borrow from. So we uh, start preempting. Uh, the preempted workload is requeued and uh, the high priority workload lands on reservations. And then finally the low priority workload lands on the spot. So yeah, with this simple relatively example, you could see the main concept of queue working and how uh, borrowing and preemption works. And with that, I will now hand over to Yuki, who will show how Q is used in production in CyberAgent. Uh, next topic is uh, production use cases. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce my company. Uh, it is often said, uh, are you a cyber security provider? Uh, but the uh, answer is no. Uh, actually, my company is a content provider uh, with a blog site and streaming platform, uh, smartphone games, and uh, uh, internet advertisement agency in Japan. So in this topic, uh, let me introduce uh, QIN Cyber Agent. Uh, my company uh, has uh, internal uh, on-premise ML platform is a static computing. Uh, in, th in this infrastructure, uh, we use bare metal uh, machine for GPU nodes, uh, and uh, the environment is heterogeneous with seven types of GPUs like this. Uh, additionally, uh, based on the left side, uh, our Kubernetes cluster is built as a single banner multi-tenant cluster. The cluster has over 300 namespaces and all namespaces are created uh, per users. Also, uh, we've been operating this cluster for over four years. So we did not create a new cluster to install Q. Uh, we just installed Q into the cluster in operation. Uh, next, uh, let me explain about kind of workloads and frameworks. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have primary three types of workloads, uh, training models, uh, notebook, and serving models. Uh, basically, uh, in every workloads, uh, we use uh, open source frameworks like QPro, KSAP, BatchJob, and so on. But uh, we manage only notebooks uh, by ourselves. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, Q can easily adapt to in-house uh, Kubernetes resources. So we implement it to a small in-house Q job controller uh, for notebook. After the next slide, uh, I will show you detail, de detail to uh, training workloads. Uh, one of our training workloads uh, is building LLM. Uh, the training jobs are managed by upstream Q and QPro MPI jobs. Uh, Please check our, our Hugging Face repository for more details. Uh, in this slide, uh, let me explain uh, how to guarantee the sequential admission of MPI jobs. Uh, the QPro MPI job is constructed by two roles. 
uh, Rancher and Walker. Uh, the Rancher role is responsible for starting the MPI process using MPI run and so on. Uh, the, the Walker role is responsible for performing actual training processes. So we need to allocate resources to all role parts at the same time. In general, uh, such behavior is called all or nothing scheduling. But uh, by default, uh, queue does not uh, guarantee that the queued job parts actually get ready. Uh, therefore, uh, resources may be allocated to subsequent job parts. Uh, here we can imagine the situation in which GPU utilize utilization fragments among nodes. Uh, for example, there is a situation in which uh, five free GPUs exist in the cluster. However, each node has only one free GPU. Uh, in this situation, when we submit a job requiring two GPUs in every pod, uh, job pod cannot submit, cannot start uh, even though the queue admits the job. Uh, wait for pot ready feature uh, give us a possibility to resolve such issues. Uh, we can also uh, configure the uh, location, uh, head or tail of the queue uh, when the requeued job is put. Uh, once the queued pots uh, cannot get ready until timeout, uh, the job is evicted and pushed back into the head or tail of the queue. Uh, in this slide, uh, I would like to introduce uh, issues spe specific uh, to long running operational clusters. Uh, ideally, we should manage all computing resources and workloads by queue. Uh, however, uh, there are some gaps in the real world because, in general, uh, some kind of uh, quota and workload management system already exists and uh, the existing system and queue often conflict. Uh, actually, there are such gaps in my cluster. Uh, in my cluster, uh, the existing quota management system depends on the Kubernetes core resource quota. Uh, initially, uh, we, were, we were planning to switch from the existing system to queue at once. Uh, however, we we, fail, we found that uh, we need to migrate uh, step by step because we need to avoid stopped services. So we need we consider uh, two approaches to migrate from existing system to queue. Uh, the first approach is uh, wait for pot ready, uh, and the second approach is admission check for resource quarter. After we evaluated two approaches. We selected the second one, admission check for resource quota. Uh, in the next slide, uh, let me explain the result of the evaluation. As I mentioned before, uh, the wait for pots ready uh, can be introduced uh, easily uh, because we can use the feature only by modifying the queue configuration. But uh, when admitted job, job uh, violate resource quota, uh, Cube Control Manager continues to try to create uh, job pods and uh, jobs continue to be queued. Uh, this repeatedly creation uh, increases the Cube, Cube API server's load. Uh, in general, uh, the capacity of Cube API server is limited and variable. So we gave up to migrate only by way to pods ready. Uh, in the second approach, admission check for resource quarter, uh, we can avoid increasing the queue API server load. Uh, as Mihal mentioned before, uh, queue uh, provides the admission check for extensible admission decisions. So we can add an other admission decisions easily by implementing the small controller. Uh, next, uh, in this slide, uh, I will show some situations in which cluster queue can be configured. Uh, in our environment, uh, we have conflicting demands. Uh, first one is uh, all GPUs uh, always should be allocated to users workloads. Second one is cluster admin uh, wants to verify platform features using GPUs. 
So we define the admin cluster queue as entirely overlapped with the user cluster queue. Then we decided on reborrowing limit uh, in the admin, admin cluster queue. Once user jobs are submitted to the queue, uh, admin jobs are preempted. Uh, the second conflicting demand uh, that uh, the first one is uh, uh, important projects uh, want to reserve uh, GPS so that uh, they can use GPS when they want to use it. The second one is uh, any GPS uh, should not be left over for efficient usage. Uh, so we created a dedicated cluster queue against important tenants uh, in business perspective and uh, all, all same priority tenants cluster queue belong to the same cohort. Also, uh, any reclaiming with, within cohort preemption policy uh, gives us possibility to realize the above conflicting demand. Uh, next topic uh, is new features. Uh, recently, we made significant uh, progresses to improve resource utilization and uh, increase scalability. The first feature is the rendering limit. Uh, as Mihal mentioned uh, in the previous slide, uh, we can configure quota through the normal quota and borrowing limit uh, in the cluster queue. But uh, only those quota configuration, uh, cluster queue cannot prevent to render resources to other cluster queues. So we introduced that rendering limit as another knob to configure quota. Uh, in this slide, uh, let me introduce dynamic admission of uh, job and reclaiming resources. The first, uh, I'm introducing the partial admission. By default, uh, queue admits jobs only when all job parts can be allocated to enough resources. But uh, I understand to demand that uh, we may be satisfied if only a minimal number of parts are started. Uh, based on left side diagram, uh, when we enable the partial admission, uh, we can deploy only the currently available parallelism into the cluster out of requested parallelism. Uh, it means that uh, only part of job is deployed. The next feature is uh, dynamically reclaiming resources. Uh, this feature has similar use cases and concept uh, with partial admission. As I mentioned before, uh, partial admission affects the uh, admission decision, but uh, this feature affects the quota release decisions. Uh, when some job parts are completed, uh, even though some job parts are still running, by default, uh, Q keeps mark marking all allocated quota as in use, even if some job parts have already finished. Based on right side, right size diagram, uh, the dynamic reclaiming resources allows us to release the quota as soon as the job pods are finished. Uh, okay, uh, so I would like to continue with the other features that we are passionate about and they are currently either in alpha or uh, design or implementation phase, so just coming soon. Uh, the first one is the integration with the provisioning request uh, API. So uh, maybe let me first introduce the provisioning request uh, itself. So this is the new API developed in collaboration with the uh, Cluster Autoscaler team. Uh, and the aim of the API is to provide the all or nothing semantic to the uh, queue. So the current problem with Cluster Autoscaler integration with queue is that uh, Cluster Autoscaler only creates nodes based on existing pods. So this requires us to create pods. And then for large comp machine learning training jobs, um, uh, the, first of all, the scale-ups can take very long uh, so that some pods are running, some are not, and we are in weird situation. But also we can uh, just fail due to GPU stockouts. And 19, having 99% of pods is not enough. So uh, provisioning request API aims to solve this problem without the need of uh, the pods to be created. So this is uh, basically the API that is exposed. First, we have the pod sets. 
so this field, let's, like a single pod set, is uh, basically lets you specify the number of uh, pods that are required and the pod template that contains uh, the requirements on the amount of uh, resources. And we have a pod set, so a list of pod sets, uh, in order to support heterogeneous jobs. Second, we have provisioning class name. So this field is like a string. It's a string that uh, lets you um, indicate the semantic for the provisioning request. So there are a couple of semantic builds into cluster autoscaler, uh, but uh, you can extend the list uh, by using some cloud provider specific uh, APIs. And finally, we have parameters that let you uh, configure the uh, desired behavior. So let's take a look how Q integrates with provisioning request. So as before, we have the job created by the user, the job is suspended and the quota is reserved. And at this point, uh, Q creates the provisioning request API and now it's the job of the cluster autoscaler to provision the nodes. So once uh, cluster autoscaler is done, the corresponding admission check is marked as ready uh, and now it's back to Q to inject all the necessary information like node selectors, labels, and whatnot, so that the point pods can bind to the uh, newly created or reserved nodes. Uh, the next feature that we are passionate about uh, is uh, multi-cluster job dispatching, aka multi-Q. Uh, so the main uh, goals for this um, projects are two. The first one is to uh, improve the GPU obtainability. So by using clusters in different regions, you can uh, get to, um, maybe in different regions, you have the GPUs available at different times due to peak hours being in at different times. Uh, and you can, uh, with this feature, also pro probe G GPU obtainability from different cloud providers. The second use case is to scale up big computational clusters by offloading to smaller execution clusters. Uh, so in this design, as you can see, we have a set of execution clusters and we have a single management cluster uh, with which uh, the user interacts with. Uh, so it's like fully transparent in this design to the user that there are multiple clusters uh, behind. And in order to achieve that, uh, in the management cluster, we don't create pods, so there are no actual computations, uh, and the status of the job created by the user is uh, live updated based on the progress in the execution cluster uh, by the multi-queue controller. So, uh, in order to uh, achieve this, we push the upstream uh, improvement uh, to the job controller, and if you are interested in technical details, uh, here is the cap. Uh, the next feature is fair sharing. So um, uh, let's say we have a cohort like this and Team X is currently not using its uh, resources because it's temporarily working on another project. So Team A and Team B compete for the resources. And as it is currently in the queue, um, uh, the workloads are admitted in the FIFO order. Um, so this can lead to imbalances, which you can sense that it's not fair. So uh, with this uh, feature, we will resolve all the quota imbalances uh, by preemption. The next feature, uh, motivated by the feedback from users of Q uh, at larger scales, is that uh, we need to introduce hierarchical cohorts in order to reflect deeper uh, organizational structures. So maybe you want to have different rules for quota management at the team level than on the department level. So this is what will be uh, achieved with this feature. And the ne next nice thing is that by having deeper uh, organizational structure, we can prioritize borrowing uh, uh, on close distances. So as shown in this picture, team A uh, uh, borrows from team B and this is prioritized by Q. Uh, so now let me conclude saying that if you are interested in using Q that we recommend trying yourself. You can just uh, use uh, the latest release or wait for the next or you can collaborate with us on the features so that we know your uh, use cases better. Um, and if you are interested in getting involved, then uh, one good uh, option is to contact us over Slack. 
um, because the project is uh, developed by uh, Batch Working Group. Uh, attend one of the uh, regular meetings. Uh, you can find more information on the Batch Working Group in the link. Or if you are interested more in the, what Batch Working Group is doing, then we invite you for our uh, presentation on Friday. And with that, I'm happy to take some questions. Hi, thank you for the great session. Um, so you mentioned initially for the cyber agent use case that you're using uh, a single large cluster. Um, so my question is, you know, have you considered multiple clusters and what was the reasoning behind this, this choice? Uh, so uh, does it to me, uh, 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 we, we don't, why, why we don't need a March cluster? Yeah, so the, the, you have a single large multi cluster, I guess, that you're multi establishing tenancy using the namespace boundary. So, have you considered, because the, uh, there was a later slide talking about multi queues and multi clusters, so have you considered in the future maybe, or I'm also interested in how or why you considered just a single cluster versus distributed? Um, uh, jobs across multiple clusters. So, uh, yes. So uh, it's a good question. Uh, so uh, actually, so uh, we we are considering the uh, using multi queue. Uh, uh, but so uh, multi queue is uh, uh, alpha stage features. Uh, so uh, 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 we we still uh, not using uh, multi queue features. Does it sound good? Hi, hello. So actually, uh, some feature like a uh, multi level queue is a little similar like other framework like Unicorn. And uh, how you compare queue with uh, framework like Unicorn or Volcano or Maybe it's possible to integrate them together or, uh, yeah, just some thoughts. Thank you. So you want uh, like to compare uh, uh, Q with other schedulers such as uh, Volcano or um, Unica, right? Uh, so we, uh, we have a slightly different approach. Uh, so, we think that one of the most important benefits of Q is uh, to delay the pod creation um, um, because it really creates a lot of load and complications, load on the API server and also on Cube scheduler. And there was like a great uh, summary uh, comparing different approaches. Uh, which I would like uh, recommend you very much. I don't. I, w I think I will not do that good job of comparing the approaches and what are the complications. As um, there was yesterday uh, talk, you, you you can find in the schedule. It was uh, excellent. Um, but maybe uh, because we don't create pods, uh, uh, we don't uh, have like the core scheduling on gang, gang scheduling in, built in queue. However, you can actually use Q, uh, schedulers from Volcano uh, and use them with Q. So this is one way you can achieve that. Uh, but generally for all or nothing semantic, we have a slightly different approach of provisioning request API. Uh, yeah, well, thank you, great talk. And I have one question. So regarding the GPU machines, what kind of a special, you know, strategy that you applied via this queue, like uh, compared to the regular CPU machines? Uh, can you talk about a little detail about that? I mean, how to scale the GPU and the CPU, yeah. Um, so the GPUs are maybe, yeah, they are a little bit special. Uh, first of all, there is they are scarce resources, uh, resources so there is not uh, a lot of them uh, provided by the cloud providers. So you often hit stockouts, 
Uh, and also another maybe special thing about machine learning jobs is that very often they require all of the pods running at the same time. So these are like the important considerations that di differentiate running uh, training jobs from other batch workloads. Uh, so with the efforts like provisioning request, uh, we really aim to improve like both the obtainability and the all or nothing semantic. So we can uh, better support running jobs that require GPU. Um, does it answer the question? Thanks for your presentation. So I have a one question. Does Q has a plan uh, to support uh, the future, like a queuing hint or something? Can you repeat? Uh, uh, like, like what? A queuing hint in the uh, Kubernetes uh, upstream uh, schedule has. Uh, okay. So Q is not a, a pod scheduler. So. Uh, so as I can remember, so queuing hint uh, is a feature for cube scheduler. So uh, uh, we don't have any plans to implement queuing hint. Okay. Maybe uh, there is also I can add that we are considering to use in the future uh, scheduling gates for job. This is. Uh, uh, sort of planned uh, enhancement uh, upstream uh, and it, this can be useful for interactive jobs uh, that you have a DAC dependencies between jobs and you want to start a given job only once all of its dependencies are completed uh, but yeah uh, it's hard for me to assess when this will happen but we are considering definitely uh, in the future using uh, uh, scheduling gates for job uh, once they land upstream, but yeah, it's it's somewhere behind our uh, heads. Hi, um, this is Abhishek from IBM Research. Um, the question is regarding provisioning request uh, interaction and, and queue. As I understood from the slides, you reserve the quota and allow the machines to come into the cluster. That may take some time if you are requesting hundreds of machines from the cloud provider. So the question really is, while that is booting up, would you support a backfilling kind of functionality inside Q? Uh, sorry, so could you maybe rephrase a little bit what do you mean like but by backfilling uh, in, the, in this context? Uh, so here's an example. You wait for 100 machines. Um, 10 of them arrive, 50 of them arrive, and there are pending jobs in the queue that can utilize the machines that are already on the cluster while the 100th machine comes up. So with provisioning request, uh, we have the philosophy, at least in queue, uh, maybe, uh, so first of all, provisioning request is still, I think, better uh, in the cluster autoscaler. So if you have some use cases, then uh, maybe you should open uh, some issue uh, or discuss at some forums. So, uh, but for now, the basic philosophy is that we create one provisioning request per job. So it's like responsible for provisioning uh, nodes only for that job. So there is like one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, so other jobs cannot uh, uh, land on the nodes provisioned for the job. Um, and also that we just await. So for example, with some um, uh, cloud provider specific APIs, you can maybe wait uh, when you want to, let's say provision thousand nodes, GPU nodes. Uh, the cloud provider may not give you immediately the, uh, the nodes because it doesn't have, but maybe it can see wh where uh, they are available, like predict when they will be available. And so that you don't get, you don't kick off the scale up immediately, but it is queued. And you wait, let's say, uh, uh, a couple of hours, but once you get, you are guaranteed to have thousand machines. Okay, I'll, I'll open an issue. Yep, thank you.
we have some more questions? So. Okay, so thank you once again. Thank you.